So we're going to needles. So let's let get let's get to the point with Madeira. Needles. Um, Needles, let's get to the point. To consistently produce good quality embroidery, you need high quality thread, correct digitizing or stitch density, correct stabilizer or backing, correct needles for the application. You will need to consider the fabric use and the thickness of the thread when choosing your embroidery needles. These factors will determine the size and point of the needle. The anatomy of a needle. We have one here. We have, um, looking at the size indicator here, we have a hundred size needle, which is used for thicker threads, such as the Classic 12, the Burmalana, and some of our metallics, such as FS20. But looking closely at the needle, we have the shoulder, which is the sloping area, the, which tr the transition between the shank and the blade. The shank here, as you can see, on industrial embroidery machines, you will find the shank is round, whilst a sewing machine has a flat edge, a flat shank. The shank allows perfect positioning on the needle into the embroidery machines. Then we have the shaft. The shaft also known as the blade. This is the body of the needle. Um, the needle size is determined by the shaft diameter. For example, the popular size 75 needle is 0.75 millimeters around the thickest part of the shaft. The groove, always fit towards the front. You will notice when you're looking at your embroidery needles, there is a long cut groove running in the front of the shaft. This allows the thread to lie more closely to the needle as it passes through the fabric. The length and size of the groove vary to needle type. Remember, when inserting the needle into the machine, the groove must be facing you. The scarf, here and here the indentation above the eye that allows the bobbin hook to smoothly grab the thread under the needle plate to create a stitch. Again, the shape and size of the scarf vary to needle type. Embroidery needles come in extra large eyes and specially shaped scarves to prevent embroidery thread from shredding. The eye. The eye, the hole through which the thread passes through. Again, the shape and size of the eye vary according to needle type. And at the very end, we have the point or tip. Again, the length and type and size varies to needle type. The fabric we embroider onto determines what needle point we should use. There are two types of fabrics. The woven fabric, which is normally the baseball caps, canvas bags and denim. And we have the knitted fabrics, which is polo shirts, sweaters, fleeces and hoodies. The RG needle, the standard point, the sharp point for tightly woven fabrics, such as denim or silk. Um, then we also have the SES needles, which are light ball points for polo shirts, knits and fleeces. And then we have the SUK, which is a medium ball point, which is slightly more rounded for finer and stretchy and loose knits. Ball points have a rounded point, like a ballpoint pen. The needle is designed to separate and slip through the knitted fibers and penetrate the fabric without damaging it. We also have one here called SAN San, which are titanium needles. The span or special application needles. Sorry, let me go back to that. We have the San One, extra strong sharp point for tough fabrics, caps, martial arts belts, and thick leather. And we also have the San 8, which is extra strong ballpoint needle with a large eye 
for specific metallic threads such as the FS30. They are titanium coated, making the needles very strong and stable and need to be replaced less frequently than standard needles. They last five times longer. These titanium needles also produce less friction for reduced thread breakages. Branzer needles from Madeira. We sell three types, Gross and Beckett, Schmetz, both have round shanks and flat shanks for the brother PRs. The thread weight you're embroidering will determine what needle size you should use. The 65 to the 75 needles are the standard sizes for most applications for 40 weight thread. Choose a smaller needle for finer th thread or lightweight fabrics. So use a smaller needle for like the Polyneon 75 or the Classic 60. Choose larger needles for thicker threads like our Burr Milano or our Classic 12 or for heavier weight fabrics. Needle recommendations can be found on the back of the thread shake card. So we have here the Classic 40 and we recommend 60 to 75 needle the slightly thicker thread, the classic 30, the 75, and our finer classic, 60 to 65. How often should you change needles? The biggest culprit for thread breaks is old needles. We have a close up here of the needle on the right. Needles shouldn't be changed on a regular basis. Look at the photo here on the right. By using a microscope, we can see the needle tip is no longer sharp or slightly ballpoint. The end of the needle is now very blunt, causing damage to fabrics, creating holes and thread breakages. Your needle may continue stitching millions of stitches without breaking, but this doesn't guarantee consistent th stitch quality. We recommend a schedule to change your needles on a regular basis. Needle one on week one, needle two on the second week, and so on. Refresh your needles to avoid thread breaks, which cause unnecessary machine downtime. So you change your needles regularly to avoid common problems, thread breaks, looping, skipped uneven stitches, bird nesting, buckering, and fabric damage. Change your needles when using a different weight thread, introducing a new type of thread, for example, metallics. Metallics are the diva of all embroidery threads. They always, always like a fresh needle. And again, refer to the back of your shake card or what needle size is used. When applying a new te technique, such as 3D embroidery, which is most commonly used on baseball caps, we recommend to use a woven, um, is a woven fabric, so we recommend to use an RG needle for that type of embroidery. Remember, new needles will improve embroidery quality.